Hello everyone, welcome back to ByteVigor. In software development, we often need to create a set of related or dependent objects. For example, in a graphical user interface library, controls like buttons, text boxes, and menus need to work under the same style. Creating these objects directly in the code increases coupling, making the code harder to maintain and extend. The abstract factory design pattern provides a solution by defining an interface for creating related objects, allowing the client to create a set of related or dependent objects without worrying about their specific classes. Let's expand on the door example from this simple factory. Depending on your needs, you can buy a wooden door from a wood door store, an iron door from an iron door store, or a PVC door from a PVC door store. Additionally, you need different specialists to install these doors a carpenter for wooden doors, a welder for iron doors, and so on. There is a dependency between the doors and the installers. Wooden doors need carpenters, iron doors need welders, etc. Now let's look at the definition of an abstract factory. Simply put, an abstract factory is a factory of factories. It provides a way to create related or dependent objects without specifying their concrete classes. By defining an interface for creating a series of related objects and having concrete factories implement this interface, clients can use these factories to create the required objects without worrying about the specific implementation details. Here is the UML class diagram representation of the abstract factory from Wikipedia. Its main components include 1. Abstract factory defines an interface for creating a set of product objects. This interface contains a series of methods, each corresponding to the creation of a product object. These methods are usually defined as factory methods to be implemented in the concrete factory classes. 2. Concrete Factory implements the operations to create concrete product objects. Concrete factory classes implement the abstract factory interface and provide specific implementations to create different types of product objects. Each concrete factory is responsible for creating a set of related product objects. 3. Abstract Product declares an interface for a type of product object. This interface defines common operations for product objects, which concrete product classes will implement. This allows client code to operate on product objects through this interface without needing to know the specific implementation details. 4. Product defines a concrete product object to be created. Concrete product classes implement the abstract product interface and provide specific operation implementations. These classes represent the actual objects being created. And clients obtain instances of these objects through factory classes. 5. Client the client class uses the abstract factory interface to create and use product objects. It only uses the interfaces declared by the abstract factory and abstract product classes without needing to know the concrete factory and product classes, achieving decoupling from specific implementations. To better understand this pattern, let's continue with the door example and demonstrate the abstract factory pattern using Java. We will create two factories that produce different types of doors and provide the corresponding installers. First, we define the door interface and its two concrete implementations, wooden door and iron door. In the UML class diagram, door is the abstract product and wooden door and iron door are the concrete products. Next, we define a door fitting expert interface, representing the professionals who install the doors. We then implement two concrete specialists, carpenter, who installs wooden doors, and welder, who installs iron doors. In the UML class diagram, door fitting expert is also an abstract product, and carpenter and welder are the concrete products. Then we define an abstract factory interface door factory and two concrete factory classes, wooden door factory, which creates wooden door and carpenter, and Iron Door Factory, which creates Iron Door and Welders. Finally, the client uses these factories to create the corresponding doors and installers. 
we see that wooden door factory encapsulates the creation logic for wooden door and carpenter. Iron door factory encapsulates the creation logic for iron door and welder. This way, for each type of door, we won't mix up the installers. Moreover, the client operates entirely through interfaces, decoupled from the specific implementation details. When should we use the abstract factory design pattern? When you need to create a set of related or dependent objects and want to implement this through a unified interface, you can use the abstract factory pattern. This ensures that a series of created objects have a consistent style or theme, and the client code is decoupled from specific implementation details, facilitating later maintenance and extension. Let's summarize today's lesson. The abstract factory design pattern defines an interface for creating a series of related objects, allowing the client to separate itself from the creation process. This not only improves the flexibility and maintainability of the code, but also makes it easy to replace or add new object creation logic. In practical development, we can use the abstract factory pattern to manage complex object creation processes and improve code quality. Thank you for watching today's video. If you found this video helpful, please like it and subscribe to the Bite Vigor channel so you don't miss more exciting content. See you in the next video.